The ending suggests that we might see more of Liv's adventures in the near future, the Norwegian series post-mortem. No One Dies in Skarns has finally been released on Netflix and is undoubtedly one of the best TV shows in recent years. It's another winner for the streaming platform whose international catalog is filled with amazing projects and engaging storylines. Shows like Biohackers, Who Killed Sarah, and Lupe and are some of the shining examples of extraordinary international ventures on the streaming service. The latest Norwegian series also reaches the level of the aforementioned titles and gives us a fresh perspective on a classic vampire story. Thanks, I'm not hungry. The story focuses on a young woman named Live, Catherine Thoroberg Johansson, suddenly waking up from the dead when her autopsy was being done. A few moments later she was deemed fit to get discharged and leading a normal life until one day. She found work as a nurse in a medical facility, and while collecting a blood sample, she gets to know the changes that have come after the near-death experience. She has become a vampire-like creature who craves blood and sacrifices other people's lives for the sake of her survival. But what happens in the end? I can stand on my Does she get to know how she became like that? Let's find out how the series concluded. Is Dr. Sver dead or alive? Liv and Reinhardt kills the doctor and presumably drink most of the blood. In the final episode, Odd takes up the job of giving a grand funeral to Dr. Sver after selling the grand package to the doctor's wife. Is he being a funeral director? What about that storage unit of yours? Can't you sell that? With the sale, Odd sees a ray of hope and sees his life finally turning around. However, Odd finds it odd that the body does not have rigor mortis even hours after death. Yeah, the business surviving. Although Live tries to sell Odd the idea that there are exceptions to rigor mortis, Odd knows better than that. Meanwhile, Judith closes down on the Helangian case and rushes to retrieve the body for an autopsy. Judith does not listen to a word said by Odd, and he has no option but to comply. However, when the police send the body to the morgue, they get an infuriating call back from the pathologists. The body of Dr. Sver is embalmed, i.e., the blood has been extracted from the body and it has been sterilized. Therefore, the pathologists cannot perform an autopsy on the body, and even if they did so, they would not get any leads from an embalmed body. The story plays with the audience by suggesting that Dr. Sver is infected by the vampires and is transformed into one of them as a consequence. However, the audience can sigh relief as after embalming, Dr. Sver is most certainly dead. After the pathology lab returns the body, Odd continues the ceremony as planned, and Dr. Sver has a dignified burial. However, the involvement of Live and Reinhardt in the death remains unknown to the police. Can Odd pay off the mortgage? Out of desperation, Odd agrees to take a boy across the border. However, he comes to know that the body is stuffed with drugs. By the time he realizes it, it is too late. Odd must execute the business, which he does with commendable composure. He gets the money needed to buy a few more days and save the house. However, the money is dirty. As it bugs Odd's conscience, he burns the money in its entirety. <laughs> However, after the death of Dr. Sphere, Live gives Reinert the idea to give Odd a chance to organize the burial of the body. Reasoning this, they leave the body to be discovered. It is only a matter of time before the body is discovered, and as there is no competition in the township for funeral services, the body comes to Odd. Odd strikes a favorable deal with the doctor's wife and squeezes out the money needed for saving the house. In the end, then, it is evident that Odd gathers enough money to pay off the mortgage. Ta -da!